Laura, we have the NFL wrestling with the first coronavirus crisis of this season. The Titans have shut down their facility and are working remotely. We have to be able to adapt and adjust. It's just a different type of adversity. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, man, we're ready to play football. We all we got. We all we got. Yeah. <laughs> Every single guy in here with shoulder pads and a helmet on helped us win. All we need is 48 on game day. 48 that believe in the same cause. They look done, done, done. And yet, they decide to pick themselves up, dust themselves off. You talk about grit from a football team. It shouldn't surprise anybody with the fight that they had. Touchdown, Titans! You have to win moments before you can win a game. And I don't ever remember a comeback like this. This is unreal. Welcome to the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Coca-Cola. We're here on a Wednesday night because there was Tuesday night football with the head coach, Mike Vrabel. I'm Mike Keith. Titans beat Buffalo 42-16. to And, Mike, when we talked about it right after the game, you were quick to make it clear that this was a win, not just for the players and the coaches, but for everybody in the organization. Yeah, it's for our fans. It's for our organization. It's for everybody involved that helped us. Uh, prepare uh, in a um, very difficult environment, and uh, and I'm very appreciative of of everybody that helped us get to this point uh, to help us be four and zero right now. As you went through this ball game, you made it clear you had to have production everywhere. That's one of the things that jumped out about this win: offense, defense, special teams, backups, guys called up from the practice squad. You got it from everywhere. Yep, and we knew that everybody that was going to be active um, during uh, Tuesday night's game was was going to have a role, and they were going to be able to contribute. Jeremy McNichols, for example, Jeff Swain. You know, there's so many examples. Kareem Moore played some snaps for us, and Darren Bates, and you know, just those are the guys that we brought up from the practice squad. And, you know, it was great to see everybody rally together. Let's talk about some of the big plays. Of course, getting a takeaway early in the ball game. The Malcolm Butler interception, and not just the fact that he picked it off, but he ran it back 29 yards. You know, I love the fact that we can get some interceptions, but you got to take advantage and catch the overthrows and the tips and the ones they throw to us. And, you know, Malcolm's got to take care of the football, but he certainly um, has some, some run ability. And we, we got to do a better job. You know, we, we do. We, we can't be, you know, 70% uh, on third down against us. That's just not going to be anywhere near good enough. You did something that you have not been able to do against Buffalo the last two years, and that was finish drives. Ryan Tannehill to A.J. Brown, how great it was to have him back. Yep, uh, he's been working hard to get back, and I know that they've worked on timing, and you can see it's a great ball. And You know, it's good coverage. He just holds his hands there, and A.J.'s such a strong player. And You know, he'll continue to work and develop, and, you know, got a lot of confidence in, in him and the entire offense. Good plays from special teams. <laughs> Chris Milton was a big factor in this game. You know, we, we signed Chris last year, and then he got injured. Um, and he is a is an impact special teams player. You know, for us to go down there and, and the great kick that we get from Kern, uh, to be able to tackle a great returner uh, in Roberts, who's leading the league in, in punt returns and kickoff returns, that was a huge key. That was our the first and second keys to special teams was to stop Roberts and to stop Roberts. And then, you know, be able to cause a, a fumble on him uh, later on in that game was, was great. And then you get a return from your own guy, Khalif Raymond, a 40-yarder to set up a score. Which might have been the third key of, of special teams was to be able to, to take advantage of our opportunities. You can see there the job that Ty Smith, that's not easy duty to, to dock a gunner one-on-one -on -one right there. We were doubling the other side, but you know we, we blocked. Ty did a great job of blocking that gunner one-on-one, -on -one, and that's, that's something that if you can block those gunners one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to have a lot of returns like that. Converting third downs is always a key for the Titans. 
But third and 19 to Khalif Raymond? My goodness. Ran a little slant there and caught him in, in, in off. You know, he split the, you know, the secondary and was able to put his head down and, uh, and, and get a first down. You know, that was, I thought Arthur made a good call. And, you know, Ryan was decisive with the ball. You see him get inside of there and, you know, split safety defense. There's a lot of space there in the middle. You got some pressure on Allen, particularly in the first half. Harold Landry with his first quarterback sack of the year. He's been playing well. Good to see it pay off in the sack category for him. Yeah, it was great. We love what Harold does. He's got some versatility, and, you know, he'll be able to uh, to build on this, and we got to start getting the, the ball from the quarterback. All right, let's talk a little bit about what you were able to do with Ryan Tannehill running the football. Big carries out of him. The touchdown was probably the biggest. Some of these design runs and keepers, but then some of these are just, you know, him staying alive in the pocket, him, him using his athleticism and, you know, we haven't designed a lot of runs for him yet this year, and, and I'm sure that we will, but but he keeps the play alive, and uh, that, that's, a, that's an added element. Malcolm Butler with the second interception in the second half and a 68-yard return. When he started going backwards, I thought he was going to fumble. Me and Bates are over on the sidelines, you know, the other night yelling, get down, get down, get down, and then it was like, go, 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 go. Let's talk about Ryan Tannehill to Jonu Smith for a couple of touchdowns. Why is Jonu Smith so good in the red zone? He's a strong player. There's there's trust there from the quarterback. He's got good play strength. You know, on the second one there late, you know, the, the coverage came off and, and Ryan recognized it and was able to dump it to him. I thought Ryan was going to run another one in, but they came off in coverage and, and then he found Jonu. What did you do today, this being Wednesday of a Sunday game, and, and how will you handle the rest of the week? Well, today was about recovery, uh, getting a lift in, uh, seeing a trainer, you know, we, we were off for a long time, you know, so there's some things that we're working through uh, and we're going to need to get everybody back that we can uh, for, for a good Houston Texans football team coming off a big win uh, last week. They don't get any easier, Mike. You know, every week is a challenge in this league. And, you know, so today we just we took it easy and they just lifted and tomorrow we'll, we'll get in here and, and get back to work. Thank you so much for taking time with us on what's a busy night. We'll let you get back to your prep and, we will handle, we will handle the Delta Dental just for you. Thank goodness, because I can't handle losing another one. <laughs> well, you're 4-0 on the field. That's all that counts. Mike Vrabel, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, guys. When we come back, it's time for our Bridgestone Clutch Performance Play of the Game. And guess what? It's a play that didn't even count. But we want to show it. Stay with us. Welcome to our special Wednesday night edition of the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. I'm Mike Keith. It's time now for the Bridgestone Clutch Performance Play of the Game. And this play didn't even count because of offsetting penalties, but we have to show it. Derrick Henry with a run. That's Josh Norman. Well, that was Josh Norman. Josh Norman, a former Pro Bowl quarterback, a physical defensive back, big guy for a corner, and Derrick Henry, oh my goodness, that's the stiff arm. The Titans teammates liked it very much. Again, offsetting penalties meant the play didn't even count, but Derrick Henry's stiff arm, always worth a look. What's also worth a look right now is the Titans' safe stadium plan, which helped 8,400 fans last night at Nissan Stadium feel safe in the surroundings, but also have an even better experience than they'd had in the past when attending a game at Nissan Stadium. Titans president and CEO Burke Nihill talked about the fact that controlling owner Amy Adams Strunk wanted to do both things. She wanted to keep people safe and she wanted them to feel like they were having the best NFL experience possible, even better than the one in 2019. We've actually spent over a million dollars on health and safety measures. We've installed 300 plus hand sanitizers around the stadium. Uh, we've moved to touchless bathroom fixtures. We even changed out our cleaning service to, to upgrade. So Amy was quick to, to be sure that we were investing in the health and safety of our fans and, and that we'd have a first class experience to offer. The safe stadium plan involved all parts of the organization. And Burke Nihill is extremely proud that so many different people from up and down the Titans ranks played a part in it. We've had a team literally 
represented by every department of our, of our organization, meeting once a week since April, uh, just being sure that we can get this right. We've met with local officials and, and, and uh, national uh, health experts, and we believe that we can, we can do this. So over 8,400 fans at the game last night. There'll be more than 10,000 at the game against Houston on Sunday. As we go to break, it's time for the Delta Dental Guess the Titan. Can you guess this Titan? See how good you are when we come back on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Coca-Cola. The Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Coca-Cola, continues with this right here, the Delta Dental. Can you guess this Titan? My guess is Ben Jones, Titan Center. Let's see, did I get it right? No. He is a center. He's a long snapper, Bo Brinkley. I'm 0 for 1, so I'm riding with Vrabel on this whole thing. What I can tell you, though, is inside the Titans, presented by Xfinity, is something where you never lose because you get a chance to see some of the things happening within the 2020 Titans organization from the inside out. Lots of people who have had a chance to view the Titans open for game day have been amazed at the different looks. How in the world was this put together, particularly under the amazing circumstances that we're all experiencing in 2020? Inside the Titans, presented by Xfinity, the Titans open. Here's your inside look. So we wanted to do something awesome with the Open this year, but we just weren't sure what kind of access we would have to the players coming into the season. So we came up with a concept to use drone footage to fly through the city. We captured some amazing stuff, and I think you're going to be really excited about it. So a 60 second Open, and what really goes into producing that is really, especially now, pretty remarkable. As far as the creative is concerned, we're really trying to utilize Nashville as a hero within the Open. So the key is Nashville would play almost as big a part as the players themselves. Some of the storyboards had Ryan Tannehill over a huge crop field out in the outskirts of Nashville, which is going to come across really cool. But the key is incorporating the player footage within the drone footage. So it was really going to come off, you know, exactly like we had hoped. Today, we are flying a dual operated platform where I'm doing all the camera operation and then Aaron is our lead pilot. And then we work in tandem to create really cool, unique shots. Head back down the river, like you kind of boom down to the middle. Like I'm gonna pan up to this building. One of them we use primarily for generating awesome views that we can put graphics into and more of our beauty shot or beauty drones. And then we have our FPV cinema drones. They're smaller, almost on kind of race quad platforms as they're called. We're able to get close to things, we're able to fly through things. I got a GoPro on top that's recording 4K, HD footage, beautiful footage. And then I have a second camera, this little guy, that gives a feed directly to my goggles, and that's what I use for piloting. So basically on board of the drone, as if I'm in a pilot seat. It's just nice to have the variety, you know, you use the big drone, the dual operator setup for some high and wide, beautiful cinematic shots, and then we use these guys to get really fast and aggressive and dynamic and fun. With this piece, we've carefully planned locations using the drones so that we can create unique plates and looks such that they fit football highlights. Whether that's dolling along to the right or flying through something that matches a camera zoom that would zoom into Tannehill as he's throwing a football. These are things we actually think about and want to recreate, so it's almost like the drone is an extension of the camera in a play. We're able to composite the
these images and these highlights onto buildings. So it almost becomes a part of that structure. So that to us is really bringing football and putting it inside of the city and inside of the state of Tennessee, which is what the Titans are all about. I'm very lucky to be able to work with some outstanding talents and some people who have fantastic creativity. There you see it, Inside the Titans, presented by Xfinity. When we come back, another outstanding talent, Amy Wells, standing by with our Rackley Roofing Tough Titan, Daquan Jones. He's next. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. I'm Amy Wells. And when deciding who was going to be our Rackley Roofing Tough Titan, there really was no other choice. It had to be Daquan Jones. Daquan, thank you so much for taking some time to be with us. Take me all the way back to the very beginning. As this week was going on and you guys were being thrown a lot of curveballs, what exactly was going through your mind? What emotions were you feeling as this week just got stranger and stranger? I'd be lying to you if I said it wasn't frustrating. Um, uh, just early on, even getting in, getting caught with COVID and, and becoming sick, uh, that was frustrating. I felt like I let my team down and uh, I wasn't doing stuff the, the right way. Uh, so um, that really made me mad. But, you know, then going in and having everything postponed and pushed back and uh, not really knowing what's going on and kind of, you know, waiting all day by the phone to hear from uh, Coach Graves and, uh, you know, what the Legion allows us to do. Um, so, yeah, it was definitely frustrating, but I'm, I'm so happy that we finally got back and uh, got in that, that building to practice and, uh, you know, come out here and get a win. How did some of the leaders on this Titans team really bring everybody together and make sure that everyone was staying focused on the task at hand? I mean, I think it was huge. I mean, just being active in your in your individual chats and then reaching out to other people who uh, might be ill or just, you know, other groups and making sure everyone's on top of their stuff. and. Uh, make sure we're all in communication. We're not like losing touch with uh, each other. Uh, I think that was huge over the last couple of days. And uh, I'm just happy that this team really pulled together and, 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 and showed that, that leadership. What sets this Titans team, this 4-0 Titans team, apart from some of the other teams that you've been a part of? They don't quit. I mean, I, I've been on teams in the past where, you know, the team scores quick and they go up and I mean, it's kind of over. It can be 10 nothing, and we can write it off. I mean, I, this team, doesn't quit no matter what the score is. I know we're gonna fight and come back. We saw a lot of celebration on the sidelines. Guys were dancing. They really seemed to be enjoying this victory over the Buffalo Bills. What was it about this victory, this moment, that was so exciting for guys? I don't know how to describe it. It was just a great feeling to be out there and uh, knowing that even though there was so many, so many obstacles in front of us and, and trying to slow us down, that we still came out there and we played Titan football. And uh, I think that was just a great, just believe all people's shoulders. I, I know that this team knows that we have to go out there and, and, and get ready for a very tough division opponent this week. And uh, I think we're all looking forward to the challenge. Daquan, thank you so much for taking some time to talk with us and be our Rackley Roofing Tough Titan. Guys, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, more Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. Stick around. The Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Coca-Cola, continues with the Nissan keys to the game. Key number one, Jadevian Clowney. Yeah, it's Clowney time in Tennessee because it used to be Clowney time in Houston. He was drafted number one overall by the Texans, played well for him. They traded him last year. This is his first game ever against his former team. Against Buffalo, he got pressure. He nearly had an interception. He's getting close. Be interested to see if he can have his first breakthrough game as a Titan against his former team on Sunday. Key number two, keep improving third down on offense. Good job by the Titans against Buffalo. Six out of ten on third down conversions. That was a problem in September for this offense. You want to keep getting better. Houston has allowed too many third down conversions. You want to keep them on that track. Have success on third down. Stay on the field. Key number three, Janu, Janu, Janu. I'm talking about Janu Smith, and you're saying, ah, you're just saying this because he had five catches for 40 yards and two touchdowns in the win over Buffalo. No, he's always played well against Houston. Two years ago in Houston, a 61-yard touchdown. Last year, 
in the game here against Houston, a 55-yard run. He's a matchup problem for their linebackers. He's a matchup problem really for anybody. Jonu Smith needs to stay a focal point of the offense for the Titans to have success against the Houston Texans. And those are your Nissan keys to success. Remind you, the Titans take on the Texans at Nissan Stadium in just four days. We're on the air at 11 a.m. with Titans Countdown on 104.5. The zone kickoff comes at 12.02. See if the Titans can go to 5-0 and win a big game in the AFC South. We hope you'll join us. For all of those who work to bring you the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.